Okay, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to week eight. We are gonna be going over module two, lesson four this week, the constitution. And then when we meet for the second time, we are gonna be reviewing for your module two assessment. So it'll be over those four lessons. So we have kind of a shorter lesson. We'll work on it some today. We'll finish it up on our next meeting, but it's about half the length of the normal notebook. And then we'll spend some extra time reviewing for your assessment. I have a cahoots and again, that review sheet. Um, because the assessment's a little bit larger than normal because it's over the four lessons, right? Not just one of the quizzes, okay? This is the last week, uh, official week of the quarter. Next week, we're wrapping things up, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And just if your grade is a little low or you need to get it in gear, this is your official notice, okay? Red alert, red alert, that you've got to get it going, all right? So, our learning intention with this lesson in module two, lesson four, is to look at the Constitution one more time. Like, why was it altered? What was the purpose in setting up these three branches, right? That's what we've been doing in module two. We've been looking at the three branches of government that the Constitution set up. We looked at the legislative branch, right? How they made laws and their role. We looked at the executive branch, the president in charge of all these different 15 cabinets, in charge of the military, appointing positions. And then we looked at the judicial branch. So we looked at that last week. What is their role? Their role is to make sure, right, the other two don't overstep and that the Constitution is being followed, that the laws that they're passing are actually constitutional. Do they have the right to do that? Are people staying within their bounds? So we're gonna analyze the interpretation of founding docs in the United States in order to answer the question, did the Constitution establish a just government. You know, that was the goal of the Constitution. And so kind of now that we're 250-ish years on the other side, 40-ish years on the other side, do we feel like, now it's probably not gonna be an absolute, that doesn't mean there aren't some things that are unjust or some things that are just, but generally speaking, how do we see it? Do we think that it's just or did it fail or has it failed? We do need to go over some housekeeping, right? <laughs> okay, uh, it's up to make sure that again, as the quarter is wrapping up, that we are on it. Okay, so please follow the pacing guide. Okay, please follow the pacing guide, and also in each module, right, it has those due dates. Okay, if you are missing an assignment, it goes in a zero. Okay, the true grade. So you have that chance to submit it with the late window, but it is a zero till it's submitted and it's graded. On um, one more announcement on this. So the SAT, I uh, posted this in the Canvas announcement, but if you want to take the SAT, if you're planning on applying to school, I suggest taking the SAT if you're planning on applying to colleges. It's a great opportunity to see if you do better than the ACT because you would want to submit the higher of the two scores. The higher your standardized test, again, it all helps with scholarship. It helps with um, getting admissions and things like that. So if you want to take the November SAT, you got to register by next week, okay, the 5th, and you email your counselor. Um, if you want to register for the December, um, then you have to register by November 2nd, all right? So, and then they would give you the dates available um, and so for which one you want to take, okay? End of the quarter is officially next Friday, but we close the gradebook on Monday, all right? And the reason for that is I have to finalize grades and then I have to post them. So it gives me time to get that done while teaching. So I have to do that while teaching next week. So, um, and stuff. so if your grade is low, if you're like, I got to get some missing work in um, and stuff, Monday is the deadline, and that includes the stuff that we're doing for this week, okay, because these are the last assignments going in for quarter one. So let me show you that list really quick, okay? So if you go into Canvas, go to Modules, and you go to the Lesson and Recording page for week eight, it's going to have the list of what is still available, okay? So it's going to show you... Um, here's what's, so yesterday, module two, lesson three was due, right? The quiz, the review sheet, the superhero project was due last Friday. So down here, it has that list of what is still open. So module two, lesson two, notebook and quiz is open. Module two, lesson two, the superhero project is open. And module two, lesson three, notebook and quiz. In addition to this week's assignments, okay, which are due this Friday. Module two, lesson four, notebook and the module two assessment. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that are open, okay? That if you have below a 70% that you can get in, that you can bring up your grade. Superhero project, the quizzes, focus on the summatives, um, they will make the biggest impact on your grade. 
any questions about um, what's open or when it's closing, end of quarter, anything like that. So if you, I don't expect you to remember this list, but that's where you can go find it. Because I get emails all the time, what's available? What can I do? And I'm like, it's listed, go go check. So you have to, you're seniors, right? So you have to, it's very reasonable for you to go and check that list because I post it every week. Okay, give me a thumbs up. If you're with me, you see it, you're good. And if you don't remember this list, that's fine, but you know where to go find it. You don't need to email me for the list. The list is there, right? I already provided Awesome. Okay, go back over into our lesson. Okay, so let's see if you were paying attention. When is the last day for all first quarter work to be submitted? Put it in the chat, let's hear it. When is the last day? No, not next Friday. That's when it, that's when, that's the end of the quarter, but when is your last day to submit work? When's your last day to submit work? Yes, October 2nd, October 2nd, Monday. Yes, October 2nd. Next Friday is when my grades are due, but your grade book closes on Monday the 2nd, okay? On Monday the 2nd, all right? So you cannot turn things in next Wednesday, next Thursday, next Friday, because I have to get grades in, all right? So that's why um, it's up, and that's for all your teachers. This is school-wide, no exceptions, okay? So, uh, well, I had a bad weekend, or this or that happened. It's like, well, technically, this is all late, so you should have had it in anyways, do you know what I mean? So. So you don't get extensions on extensions, okay? So you gotta get your work in this week. If you're behind, you gotta buckle down and, and get that stuff in, okay? Um, I saw this reel this weekend and um, it's on this, you know, I'm sure you follow different accounts and, you know, things that are, so I follow a couple of teacher, teacher humor accounts and stuff. So humor me for a second because this is how teachers feel when talking to students sometimes. So hopefully you'll find it humorous, okay? I what? <laughs> Wait, sorry. What what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? I what? <laughs> Wait, sorry. What what do I you know it's true, right? You know it's true. We go over it and then like five minutes later. Wait, what? <laughs> You all know it's true, right? Come on, you guys know it's true, all right? All the time. I have at least six, seven emails a week. <laughs> That's me, can't lie. It's all good. We're laughing, right? It's all good, you know, and stuff. But with that, right, I tell you all the time, I, I'm like, I'm like, I just went over it. <laughs> like, you didn't tell me. I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> all right. So I appreciate the humor. I do tend to sprinkle these in a little bit more and stuff. So it's just... You know, it's true. I'm sure you could find them about teachers. All right. That they, I know we're not perfect and there's definitely things you could say. But yes, if I had a dollar for every time, <laughs> I could retire. Yay. All right. Let's jump back in. Y'all are great. Okay. So we are going to be looking at Constitution today. All right. So how did the Constitution deliver? We looked at it originally, right? Why they wrote it and how the Articles of Confederation did work. So the goal in this lesson, which will be pretty short, so we'll do some today and then some tomorrow, is, you know, why um, are we happy with what it's done? You know, did it do what it said it was going to do? Did the Federalists, when they wrote those Federalist papers, um, did they actually deliver the just government that they promised? Okay. Or, you know, and the reality of that is, is it's probably not a pure yes or no, right? It's probably yes, but, or no, but, right? Um, for me, it's yes, but there's certainly problems, right? We're constantly trying to fix. So it doesn't mean it was perfect, perfect, but is it just, you know, is it, do we have the ability to make the changes we need? And that's going to vary a little bit on opinion. Okay. So let's jump over into Canvas and we're going to start our notebook today. We'll finish it up tomorrow and then we will review for that larger assessment tomorrow. Okay. Or not tomorrow, sorry, on Thursday, since this is period two. And again, remember that I always link those review sheets as well on that live session page, right? Okay, the lesson and recording page. Also the Cahoots game we're gonna do. I have a 10 question Cahoots game we'll do tomorrow. And that's also linked. So if you wanna do it again and stuff, and those are pulled directly from the quiz, from the test bank, all right? So those are all linked there for you. Okay, let's go to modules. And we're gonna go down to module two, lesson four. As we wrap up the first quarter, holy cow. I feel like it's gone by kind of fast, I don't know. 
second quarter always goes by really fast. Second quarter is like blink, right? Especially when Thanksgiving gets here, we blink and it's like midterms and we're, you know, on winter break. So we're going to go to the overview page. So the Constitution, the overview page. Give me a thumbs up once you're in Canvas. You're with me. One of the best ways you can improve your grade, right, is just doing work with me in class. We get a lot of work done here in class. I go over a lot of stuff in class. Okay, so we're going to be looking at that compelling question. Did the Constitution establish a just government? Okay, and again, we might be able to find some generalized truths, and then some of it might vary on your own experiences or the way that you view topics or the way that you view the world a little bit. Okay, but we're going to look at try to look at this objectively um, of has it delivered? No government's perfect. It just isn't. Because why? Because humans are flawed, right? We aren't perfect. So therefore, we can't set up or or instigate a perfect government. Humans are flawed. And even if something is perfect in its design, we will we will muck it up. Right. We always do. OK, go ahead and open up your notebook. So access the notebook. Click on that. Open up your notebook. Once it's open. What we always do, right, you're going to save it to your Google Drive. OK, so you're going to save it to your government folder and then you're going to make it shareable. OK, so you're going to do anyone with the link, anyone with the link. Okay, Go ahead. You're good. OK, how are we doing? Give me a thumbs up. You got it. Thumbs down. You need more time. Hopefully you're starting to get the routine. You're like this Miss Hall, she's very predictable. Now she's going to say, let's go back over into Canvas and find our number one. <laughs> right? <laughs> See, they could do a reel about that. You're like, and then the teacher said for the hundredth time. <laughs> I know the jokes can go two ways. All right. We're going to go back over into Canvas. And remember, we keep that open. We kind of toggle back and forth. So we're going to go to our next page. And let's find our compelling question, okay? So did the Constitution establish a just government? And the goal is today and a little bit of tomorrow to kind of answer that more from the other side. Now, the Founding Fathers felt that they set up a just government. They wrote it, right? We're all a little biased. I don't know about you. When you write an essay, you're like, this is amazing, all right? When you submit your superhero project, you're like, uh... I've never seen a better piece of work, okay? You know what I mean? Like, we're biased and stuff. So now that we're on the other side, we're 240 years in, we're kind of kind of look back and give them a little bit of a grade, you know? Is it just? Um, you know, and and how do we how do we determine if something is just? You know, just and fair don't always align and stuff. So we're going to kind of look at that. To 100% to answer that, we won't because, again, everyone's going to have opinions, you know, if you're more liberal or if you're more conservative or depending how you see topics, right, or your own experience in life, you might see it a little bit differently. But we can probably come up at least with some generalizations is did they deliver on some of their promises? OK, did they follow through? Does it function the way they designed it? OK, or is it completely flawed? All right, we'll jump back over into Canvas. And again, you can copy and paste and put that in number one in the notebook, okay? We're gonna do number one and number two today. There's only five questions, so that'll give us three, four, and five tomorrow, and then we'll do the Cahoots game and review, okay? So we'll, we'll be able to get through this, no problem. Come on, Canvas. All right, here we go. So why did the framers of the United States Constitution believe a new document was necessary? So remember, this is going back and reviewing a little bit. What were some of the issues that we had in the Articles of Confederation? Remember, the Articles of Confederation only set up one branch of government, and that was a legislative, right? There was only a Senate. There was no president. There was no judicial branch. Um, there was no centralized military. There was no ability to collect tax. It really was a glorified council. OK, it was a glorified council that really didn't have any authority. It was more like having 13 independent. I mean, they were they were states, but almost like countries because they didn't have to cooperate. You're not really part of a country if you're not forced to cooperate. Right. You know, if every state can do what they want, are you really a part of the country? No, you're you're independent. Right. You're doing what you want. 
you know, if you have to fall in line or you have certain rules you have to follow, then yes, you are a part of the organization because everyone has to kind of follow the rules, right? Play by the same game, so to speak. So I got a quick video we'll show, and they do a good job of just kind of discussing the framers, the problems, and then what they were trying to solve. And we'll answer number two, and then we'll wrap up for the day. Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> this is an ad about working at Durango Casino and Resort. Liberty cannot be preserved without a general knowledge among the people. The founders were very clear when they established a republic as the form of government for the United States in which the United States Constitution clearly limits the size and power of government. In America today, government touches nearly every aspect of our lives. It regulates things such as businesses, homes, the economy, and even our health care. Obviously, these regulations affect everyone, grandparents, parents, even children. Benjamin Franklin put it this way, the ordaining of laws in favor of one part of the nation to the prejudice and oppression of another is certainly the most erroneous and mistaken policy. These measures never fail to create great violent jealousies and animosities between the people favored and the people oppressed. Similar were the sentiments of political philosopher, economist, and creator of the Federalist Party, Alexander Hamilton. It has been observed that a pure democracy, if it were practicable, would be the most perfect government. Experience has proved that no position is more false than this. Their very character was tyranny. Hamilton was one of America's first constitutional lawyers an author of the Federalist Papers, a primary source document still used for interpretation of the Constitution today. Let's take a step back into the past. Oops, a little too far. Much better. It's 1789 and we're at Constitution Hall in Philadelphia. The delegates of the first 13 states are discussing the replacement of the Articles of Confederation, which had failed after only two years. The failed Articles of Confederation were established during the War of Independence. Back to Independence Hall, where the delegates have decided that the best form of government would be a republic for the new America. Despite this decision, even Benjamin Franklin knew a republic, while it would be best for the country, would be tough to keep. The original intent of the Republic was to protect the country and handle differences between the states. National government was to be a framework for defense with no more than the minimum power required. The limitations of the Constitution were designed to prevent the massive power and limit the size of government that the founders saw in other nations. The primary author of the Constitution and America's fourth president, James Madison, said, If we advert to the nature of republican government, we shall find that the censorial power is in the people over the government and not in the government over the people. The power of the people over the government was the reason and source for the freedom, prosperity, and success of the American people. The change in our society, economy, and the loss of our freedoms today are directly related to the change in our government. The principal author of the Declaration of Independence and America's third president, Thomas Jefferson, warned, It is incumbent on every generation to pay its own debts as it goes. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Most bad government results from too much government. Jefferson's words now echo in the realities of today's government. The founders intended to limit government and its powers. Each of our country's three branches was created to act in the best interest of the people and not to step on them or their God-given rights. Preamble sounds like a word out of their league, but it really just means an introduction. So in other words, the preamble is the introduction to the U.S. Constitution, a document created by our founding fathers in 1788. Many refer to it as a basic statement, 
that defines the intentions and meaning of the Constitution. Contained in just 52 words, the preamble states, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Though it's not very long, it does contain a lot of complex words and statements. Let's take a closer look to find out why the Founding Fathers felt it was so important that they would make it the first part of the United States Constitution. It begins with, we the people of the United States. Immediately, the Founders wanted to show it was the people who were establishing the government. The Constitution was created by the people, for the people, from their rights and responsibility to establish just and sound government. In order to form a more perfect union, the Founding Fathers understood a perfect nation wasn't possible, but they felt a limited republic was the closest form of a perfect government for the imperfect people. Establish justice. The intent behind this line was to protect Americans from the many faults of unfair governments the Founders had come from. The Constitution was written to protect Americans from an all-powerful government. Ensure domestic tranquility. This means the Constitution is designed to help keep America a peaceful nation, bent on allowing Americans to make their own living and provide for themselves in a safe environment. The preamble continues by stating the Founders' intention that the Constitution was to provide for the common defense. This is rather obvious. The intent was to keep America protected as a nation against foreign powers and threats of all types to join the states together as a united front. Promote the general welfare. This statement has frequently been incorrectly used to justify passage of legislation providing unconstitutional services and funding for a wide array of special interest groups and programs. And secure blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. The Founding Fathers wanted the Constitution to be a solid document that would protect them and their grandchildren from tyrannical government. Posterity simply means all future generations. And finally, the preamble states, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. By this, they wanted all Americans to know and recognize the highest law in America is the Constitution and no one has the right to violate it or any of its citizens. Despite the fact that the words in the Constitution are a bit different than the words we use today, it is still every bit as important and relevant as it was back then. At this point, I'd like to bring in our friend Dr. Smith, who's considered an expert in American politics and constitutional law. Dr. Smith, did America's founders plan a limited government? The framers preferred a limited government because that would ensure a maximum amount of freedom. A government has to be strong enough to carry out the basic functions of government, self-defense and uh, protection of economic contracts and things of that nature. So it must be strong enough to do that. However, if it's too strong, then it becomes a threat to the citizens it's supposed to serve and protect. Limited government is supposed to be a happy medium between those two things. So government's strong enough to do what it needs to do, but weak enough so that the citizens can still control that government when necessary. Uh, we primarily achieve our limited government through a constitution, and that constitution acts as, a, as, a, uh, as almost an umpire to our form of government. And so um, that allows us to be limited, it allows us to have protected liberties and protected rights, and if you've noticed throughout uh, recent history throughout the world, limited government seems to be the preferred method of government when people are given the option to choose their own form of government. So I think it's interesting, and I think um, one of the things I do like um, from this video and stuff like that um, is that it helps kind of maybe articulate some of what does actually make ours different, and that is really those Bill of Rights, those freedom of speech that the mm -hmm. Constitution um, guarantees, you know, that, um, that we are guaranteed certain rights that are not always guaranteed in other governments. No two governments are the same, and freedom of speech is a very slippery slope. 
um, and stuff. And there are a lot of countries that say they have freedom of speech, but when you actually look at their laws, there is not protection of speech. Um, and so, so we do have some of the most, now some might call it progressive, some might say it's too open, you know, but when I say where we are allowed to say our freedom of speech is much more, um, we're allowed to say a lot more than most people in other countries and stuff. And that is something that sets us apart where the people have more power and the goal is that the government is not suppressing the people, you know, and that's a, one way of kind of gauging that. How much freedom do I have to speak my mind? Now, that doesn't mean go hurt people, but how much freedom do I have to disagree with my government, to protest my government? And if you're not allowed to do that, then you have a very overbearing government. If you are allowed to do that, if you can speak out against your government, if you can protest against your government, um, that is a sign of your your ability, right, to keep that government in check and say, I don't agree with you. Because when you can't question authority, it's tyrannical. If it's my way or highway, that's tyrannical, right? That's 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 one size fits all. Everyone fall in line. Going back to what the founders were trying to get away from with Britain. All right, let's go back over into Canvas. My Canvas tab go. Okay, so there's some letters from the um the Federalist documents, okay, but what I did is I went through and I summarized it, all right, so yay, you're welcome, <laughs> all right, and they're gonna say, why did the framers of the U.S. Constitution believe a new document was necessary, okay, um, the central government was on, um, was limited in power, the Articles of Confederation was not working, the inability to raise taxes, to raise revenue, um, there was no way to, you, you do have to have money, I know some people, um, I don't know anybody who's excited to pay taxes, but the reality is you have to pay some tax, okay? We have to pay something into the system for them to provide us protection, to provide us services. Schools aren't gonna pay for themselves. Roads aren't gonna pay for themselves. Militaries aren't gonna pay for themselves. Like we have we have to fund it. The question of how much is always the debate, right? But you have, you have to pay taxes. You can't have a government without some income. Um, some governments or state governments were going overboard. We saw that in Massachusetts, Shays Rebellion and stuff. They were being they were being ridiculous with their taxes, kind of like mob rule that we saw in Britain and confiscating people's properties. They were violating their rights. So we needed a document that would protect people's rights against excessive tax or excessive governments. We needed a standing army. Um, every country has to protect their borders. That's just a reality. You know, if if open borders was really a thing, then there would be no reason to have passports, right? There would be no reason to have security at borders and stuff like that. Every country wants to protect themselves, and part of that is just like with your home, right? Um, when you go to bed at night, what 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 should you check? Who's listening? Put it in the chat. When you go to bed at night, what's something that you should check, or someone in your house should check? Someone in your place should check before you go to bed. For your security yes thank you shane yeah lock the doors right okay if you just leave the front door open and you go to bed i don't know about you i'm not going to feel very secure so in the same way because right because we we like the idea that people are going to do the right thing but the reality is not everybody does right somebody could come in and rob you someone could come in and do something really bad you know so you want that deterrent that protection in the same way with the country we have to have protections. There has to be some, you know, guidance or protection of us because if anybody can just come in, how is that any different than somebody just coming in your house, you know? Now, you like people to come in your house, but people you've invited, right? People that you've screened. Do you see kind of what we're saying? In the same way with the country, it's not that they don't let people in, but you want there to be a process, right, of that we're hopefully bringing people in that will contribute to the country, that are good for the country, not who are going to be criminal or you know, it's it's a very basic concept and it takes money to do that. All right. How are we doing? Do we have one and two done? Give me a thumbs up. So tomorrow we'll continue this. We'll look at three, four and five and then talk more about how the Constitution is trying to protect us and then get into more. Has it accomplished what we needed it to do? OK, or does it continue to do that um, and stuff? And then we will review for your um, for your test. OK, so we will review for your test tomorrow. So we went over the compelling questions. What was the goal of the framers? OK, um, and stuff. So last day to submit all work. Let's try this one more time. Put the date in the chat. When is the last day to submit? Next Friday is the end of the quarter. But what is the last day to submit all work? That is still open. Yes, Melanie, let's keep going. Come on, folks. 
Alexa, Andres, yes, Peyton, good. October 2nd, Monday. Okay, so please, please, please. And remember where you can find where you can find that list, okay, is you go to modules and you go to that lesson and recording page, right? And that's where you can find that list of what's still open um, and when it, you can be submitted by. Okay, so if you're like, my grade isn't good, I need to get it up, go to that list, see what you have a zero on and start submitting. Start with Superhero Project. If you've not gotten that in, get that in. And then the quizzes, all right? Anything summative is gonna have a bigger impact on your grade. Okay, I'll let you go a couple minutes early. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, stay behind. Otherwise, I will see you on Thursday, okay? Thank you, you guys are awesome. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Let's stop it.